we have a pretty broad uh, scope of uh, certification offerings that we have through our offices here in the US, as well as our office in the UK and in Denmark, covering mainland Europe. So within Xveritas network, we are able to cover most global certification schemes for EX equipment, um, regardless of what country you may be going into. Uh, we can service you and ensure that you have compliance on a global scale, allowing your products market entry um, to most countries within the, the world. My name is Luke Ricks. I'm the managing director for Xveritas North America. Uh, I have been working for HX Notified Bodies or ICX Certification Bodies for uh, over 10 years now. Um, my background is in engineering. I have a mechanical degree, but I've also done quite a bit of electrical work uh, over the years. Um, primarily, I've specialized in work uh, covering flame-proof equipment, explosion-proof equipment, purge and pressurization, and more recent years working as an auditor for QA and QAR as well as ISO 9001 um, for the various certification schemes which we offer, uh, ICX, ATEX, as well as North America NRTL program and the Canadian Status Council of Canada run program to cover compliance with uh, the US and Canada. So again, today we'll be covering um, the UKCA certification scheme, including the UKCA timetables, mapping the UK directives as they've translated over from the EU directives, how to identify certification bodies now known as um, approved bodies for uh, gaining your accreditations when required to do so through a third party uh, laboratory, <clears throat> identification of designated standards, where to find those, and uh, how to ensure that you're complying with the most up-to-date versions of those standards. Transitioning your EU certification or existing IECX certification over to a UK CA certificate. Uh, we're going to cover the UK CA quality management system requirements, as well as a brief overview of using this UK CA mark um, on your product going forward. And of course, at the end, we'll have a question and answer session for anything that you might have that we haven't covered or that's a specific situation that we will try to assist on as we can here in this presentation, or we may have to follow up on those uh, as needed to get more in depth on some of the items. So as many of you uh, are likely aware, the CE mark has been the legislative framework for governing the EU product compliance for decades now. Uh, this mark has facilitated tr trade within the EU for a variety of products. As a result of Great Britain's departure from the EU, they've had to generate a standalone legislative legislation resulting in the development of the UK CA certification mark and scheme. Uh, the display timetable here shows the transitory period from CE to the UK CA marking for products um, being offered onto the Great Britain market. Beginning in January of this year, 2021, the UK CA mark could be applied to products and accepted by regulatory authorities. However, the CE mark uh, will continue to be accepted through December of this year. <clears throat> Beginning January 1st of 2022, compliance with the UK CA regulations and marking of the UK CA product will become mandatory and the CE mark will no longer be recognized within the, uh, within the UK. However, the mark will be accepted as long as it appears on the packaging of the product, it doesn't necessarily have to be on the product itself um, during the year of 2022. Um, so that will be accepted. And this is a way to allow manufacturers and uh, distributors to deplete their stock as they gear up towards full compliance with the UKCA uh, mark, which becomes mandatory on the product directly in January of 2023. So as of this year, both CE and UKCA marking is acceptable, which we'll show on this slide here. 
Um, and then beginning uh, January 1st of 2022, the UK CA mark is the only acceptable mark within, the, uh, within Great Britain. Now, of course, your products can still be compliant with both UK CA and CE and bear both marks, but the CE mark alone will not be accepted as a means to show compliance with the legislative directives of Great Britain beginning January 1st of 2022. Um, so one thing, one important thing to remember regarding this transitory period is that it's intended to serve products already placed on the UK uh, market. The timetable for products placed on the market after January 1st, 2022 must have the UK CA mark. So beginning um, January 1st of next year, if your product has not previously been placed on the market, you don't have the option of um, marking the package only or utilizing any sort of the CE certification um, assessment to support your UK CA uh, approval. Beginning if your product, product is not put on the market until 2022, then you have to be fully compliant with the UK CA certification scheme immediately when placing the product on the market. Now, uh, it is worth noting that there are a number of products which have special rules or which will utilize uh, the old approach, which are noted here in the footnote. Uh, we're not going to be covering those in detail today. So if you do have a product that falls into one of those uh, categories, then you need to address those um, differently than what we're going to discuss here today during this presentation. Okay, so that covers the um, UKCA timetables and when your requirements for certain steps of uh, conformance with the marking or with the certification scheme are going to be necessary. Now we're going to talk a little bit about mapping the old EU directives over to the UKCA regulation. So in most cases, uh, each of the legislative EU uh, directives correspond directly to a new UKCA regulation. So the UK CA is using the term regulation essentially in place of the term directive that you've most commonly seen with uh, the EU legislative requirements. Uh, the CE mark is going to be replaced by the UK CA mark. Uh, notified body nomenclature is changing and the new terminology for UK CA will be approved bodies. Uh, the new approach directive and designation or designated organization uh, also referred to as NANDO, which is the accreditation scheme that the certification or sorry, notified bodies utilize, uh, is going to be replaced by the UK government, UK CA list. So the UK government, um, UK CA list will recognize which approval bodies are acceptable for compliance with the UK CA mark, while NANDO will remain uh, as a regulatory agency for approving notified bodies in uh, mainland Europe. So the old terminology of UA harmonized standard uh, now with the UK CA mark will become known as UK designated standards and we'll we'll do some of those here in a minute. Uh, EU type examination certificates will become UK type examination certificates and QAN for quality management systems under the EU legislation becomes a UK QAN for quality management systems. So as you can see, a lot of the terminology remains uh, largely the same, um, but there are some key differences uh, and slight variations in nomenclature, which are important to be familiar with so that you uh, are speaking the right terminology when attempting to show compliance or become compliant with the UK CA certification scheme. Uh, so here's some of the mapping of the EU legislation and the new UK legislation that replaces it. Uh, you can see a number of the directives and their corresponding UK legislation here. So uh, Ex Veritas is focused on um, EX product certification. So we primarily work currently with the EU uh, legislative directive known as ATEX. So this directive within the UK uh, and under the UK certification scheme is the equipment and protection system. Uh, systems intended for use in potentially explosive atmosphere regulations. So a bit more long, uh, long winded there, but the EPS will, is the short, shortened form of that regulation that covers EX equipment and 
explosive atmospheres um, within the UK. A lot of the other directives, as you can see here, have been ported over with similar names under the UK legislation, uh, often just replacing the name with a uh, directive with regulation. So we're not going to go in depth with all these today, but as you can see, each one of these has a kind of one-to-one -one transition um, from an EU leg legislative directive to a UK legislative regulation. And the list of these is available uh, on the UKGov.UK uh, website. I have some um, references at the end of this presentation, which will be available for everyone if uh, they're interested in looking these up directly. Okay, so now that we know what the new regulations are uh, referred to as, uh, which understanding your product and which uh, regulatory um, standards and regulations cover them now, you need to be able to identify which UK CA conformity assessment bodies uh, are acceptable for certifying your product against the regulations under which your product uh, falls. So all of the existing UK-based conformity assessment bodies or CABs have been given status as UK approval bodies. So those, anybody that was covered by NANDO previously as a CAB under the EU regulations has been given status as a uh, approval body under the UK CA uh, certification scheme. Now there's no mutual recognition agreement uh, that's been reached between the UK and the EU for conformity assessment. Therefore, cabs located outside of the UK or outside of a country which the UK does have a mutual recognition agreement in place are not able to certify goods for the UK market after the transition period. Uh, the reverse is also true in the UK. If the UK um, cab is the product, is the assessment body which you utilize to show compliance with the standards and certification schemes, that's not necessarily going to be directly related, uh, or sorry, directly accepted within the EU uh, to issue an EU hype certificate by a certification body in mainland Europe. Uh, so this is why Experitas um, preemptively established a office in mainland Europe uh, our offices in uh, Denmark, which is already qualified as a EU notification body. Uh, so this, um, in conjunction with our UK office, which is now a UK CA approval body, uh, is able to, we're able to issue certificates for both uh, mainland Europe as well as the UK, as well in conjunction with our IACX approvals. Um, we can issue all three certificates, which will cover you for most global applications. Uh, depending on certain countries, obviously, you may have additional regulatory requirements such as InMetro, CCC, or EAC, um, which apply. And we also have facil facilitation in place with uh, other organizations to help gain those certificates all at the same time to uh, make it a little bit easier on the product manufacturers and not having to deal with multiple regulatory authorities, just have a kind of one-stop shop here at Experitas. So um, there is a database, um, as previously mentioned, the UK MCAB, which is the UK Market Conformity Assessment Body Database, can be found on the UK um, or the dove.gov.uk website. Um, the database can be sorted by and sort searched by using keywords or by uh, body type and legislative area. So if you know which legislative requirements um, that you need to meet, you can easily find an approval body on the gov.uk website, which will be qualified in the areas uh, that you need to gain regulation or gain compliance uh, assessment for. So the scope of accreditation can also be found for each cab uh, and viewed in order to verify that that cab holds the appropriate standards within the certification scheme to evaluate or within the certification to uh, evaluate your product. So as an example here, um, you can see the uh, Exeritas schedule of accreditation, which specifies the designated standards which are within our scope. Uh, as mentioned, we primarily focus on hazardous location certification. So you'll see many of the 60079 uh, standards listed here. 
So that is how you uh, are able to identify UK CA conformity assessment bodies and verify that they have within their scope the appropriate standards and um, legislative regulations that you need to show compliance with for your product. <clears throat> so with that in mind, how do you know which standards you need um, to show compliance with? So the, desi so the designated standards, which I mentioned before, is the new terminology within the UKCA replacing harmonized standards um, terminology, which is used in the EU directive, are recognized by the UK government and published in a formal notice available on the gov.uk website. Uh, where the designated standards specified in the notice of the publication is prefixed by an EN, it's acceptable to reference this version in technical documentation or a version of the same standard with a national prefix. So this is because the European standards are adopted identically by the 34 national members of, the, of CEN or CINELEC. <clears throat> so these are co-published and BSI, which is the British Standards Institute, uh, acts as the UK national standards body representing the interest of UK stakeholders within the development of these standards. So while they're published um, as a joint effort within the EU, a lot of these standards do have representation by the UK um, standards organizations and therefore are uh, recognized as adoptable or technically equivalent standards for showing compliance with the regulations. Now, while the essential legal requirements in Great Britain remain the same as the equivalent EU law, uh, the informative annex ZA or ZZ, which is going to be designated within those standards, um, where those reference EU law, uh, if you're utilizing one of those national standards published by one of the 34 current member countries, any of those references should just be read as um, applying to the legislative, legislative requirements for Great Britain in the same way. So those regulatory requirements that we looked at earlier that poured over and show which directives correlate with which regulation. If you're utilizing a uh, standard published by one of the other standard, one of the other country member countries, then you just read anything that read that refers to the EU law as the Great British law, and you can apply it in the same way. Um, and so in that way, the technical requirements within the harmonized standards or the designated standards can be applied and you can still find conformance with the regulatory requirement, legislative regulatory requirements. Um, so there's a lot of reciprocity still in the technical requirements between the two regulations. Uh, the majority of the differences lie in the legislative requirements and the qualification of the certification bodies. Um, so this, so obviously this may change um, when the essential legal, legal requirements in Great Britain change. So as these are now, these two legislative um, texts are managed independently of each other, you may begin to see deviations and they may grow apart as years pass and new additions of the standards and uh, legislative legislation are issued. So something to be cognizant of that you may end up with deviations that require changes in technical assessment or markings or, um, or processing of um, declarations of conformity and uh, instruction manual information. So keep those in mind uh, as things begin to deviate. Uh, but currently everything is more or less aligned and all the regulatory requirements are the same as they were previously. I'm going to... Chandler, can you mute everyone? I got some background noise. <clears throat> and so um, the technical requirements, like I said, are, some, are currently all aligned, but you may begin to see deviations as time passes. So if you are interested in gaining certification to both schemes, kind of now is the time to do it so that it's easier to port over those existing certificates before there's too much change in regulation. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, you can go on the um, gov.uk website and you can identify the designated standards which would be applicable to your product. 
uh, conveniently a consolidated list of designated standards is available by regulation. So if you know which regulation applies to your product, you can go and look into that regulation specifically and see which designated standards um, will, you can utilize to show conformance with the regulatory requirements. So uh, as an example here, you can see the standards associated with the new uh, EPS, which is the uh, equipment and protective systems intended for use in potential explosive atmosphere regulation. Uh, so these mirror the EN 6079 and EN 80079 standards, uh, which are recognized as harmonized standards by the EU and the ATEX directive. So as I mentioned, currently the technical requirements to satisfy the essential health and safety uh, rules of the regulations or directives are still aligned. So there's not a great leap in technical requirements. Uh, there is some legislative, legislative changes which affect markings and the way that import and UKCA markings are applied and um, the directive rules, but as far as technical requirements for product compliance, they remain largely aligned. Okay, so uh, I'm assuming the big question and why I, a lot of you are attending this uh, presentation is to understand how do you uh, have a UKCA certification issued and what can you do to leverage your existing EU certificates to receive UKCA approval? So the EU certificates issued by a UK CAB can be used as is without modification to declare compliance with the UKCA regulation. Um, so essentially, if you have a EU certificate, EU type examination certificate issued, by a UKCAB um, that has now become a UK approval bo approved body, you can continue to use that certificate without having it reissued um, or have any sort of change. It still is sufficient to back up a declaration of conformity from a technical aspect that you comply with the essential safety, um, health and safety regulations of the new ESP or whatever directive or legislative regulation may apply to your product. Um, but as to help avoid confusion, Ex Veritas has opened a program to issue new UKCA certificates or transfer certificates currently held with our UK office to our EU office based in Denmark or vice versa free of charge. So you can get a new UKCA certificate or uh, a new EU certificate if you hold a current certificate with Exveritas, um, assuming that the certificates are to current harmonized or designated standards. So that is something that is key here. So if you haven't kept up your certificate to the most recent version or the current versions um, identified by either the ATEX official journal or the um, UK.gov published list of designated standards, including addition, then you'll have to get those standards updated in order to issue a new certificate. We can't issue certificates other than to state-of-the-art um, standards, which are those that are identified as um, UKCA designated standards with the addition or those identified in the uh, ATEX official journal. So if um, so, that's how we can utilize your current certificate to either issue a UKCA certificate or issue a new uh, EU certificate out of our Denmark office. If you do need an additional certificate, so if you're interested in having dual cert certifications of taking your current EU type certificate and maintaining that certificate and also issuing a UKCA certificate, uh, we can do that as well. There is some cost associated with that. Uh, but we keep it minimal for products that we have all the technical information for already. Um, it's more of an administrative cost, so the cost on that is, is fairly reasonable. Um, and again, as long as you're up to date on the most harmonized or the most current harmonized or designated standards, um, there's very little technical assessment that is required. <clears throat> Um, so additionally, the terms of the UK uh, EU withdrawal agreement in Article 46 uh, mean that upon request by a manufacturer, a cab located within the UK or EU should share relevant information that they hold in relation to conformity assessment carried out before the end of the transi transition period 
uh, with a body located in the other market. So if you have a certificate issued on, by a, um, a notified body within the EU that is unable to issue you a UKCA certificate, we can request that information um, from them that shows us the assessment and conformity with the harmonized standards and utilize that to issue a UKCA certification scheme. So this is intended to facilitate the issuing of new certificates or transfer of existing certificates. Um, while the accepting cab must take responsibility and therefore they may want to validate, uh, retest or assess it <clears throat> as necessary, depending on um, the results of their review of that information provided by the current uh, notification body. So that is another way that we can help facilitate market access to the UK without uh, having to completely reassess and retest and revalidate the document uh, under um, that uh, withdrawal agreement um, between the UK and the EU. So while the EHSRs, like I mentioned, are currently the same, they may deviate in the future, which would make the process of transferring certificates more difficult and cumbersome. So uh, due to this, we're recommending that manufacturers interested in obtaining certifications for both markets act soon while the um, requirements are still aligned in order to avoid additional um, complex or complications while transferring certificates once there is more deviation between um, between the two certification schemes. <coughs> um, and of course, utilization of IACX reports as part of the IACX uh, scheme reciprocity will continue to be in place. So if you do have a IACX certificate issued um, as an IACX certification body, Experitas is able to utilize uh, testing conducted by another IACX certification body uh, testing and assessment in order to leverage that against issuance of a certificate for specific regions such as UKCA or the EU. So that's another way that you can utilize your current certification um, assessments and uh, gain access to either the UK or, or EU markets. <clears throat> so one um, special issue to recognize with assemblies. So currently certificates issued uh, which rely on a separately certified part. So if you are incorporating a component which holds a certificate into your assembly, um, it may only rely on certificates issued by EU cabs if the certificate was issued prior to the end of, end of the transition period. So at the end of this year, um, you will no longer be able to utilize EU type certificate holding components in an assembly to gain UKCA uh, certification. Any components which you're relying upon to show compliance with the regulation have to hold a UKCA certificate and you can't, can't rely upon an EU certificate for those components. So that's something to keep in mind moving forward and uh, when you're doing component selection and sourcing, um, definitely something to, to check when it, if you're trying to gain market access to both UKCA and EU, they would be, need to be dual certified or certified to the specific overarching scheme that your assembly is trying to show compliance with. Uh, this may become a bit of a bottleneck as everyone is transitioning over and getting dual certificates issued. Um, obviously, we're expecting quite a bit of rush uh, at the end of this year and the beginning of next for um, certification transfers and people that are unaware of these regulations come, becoming effective in January 1st. So we're encouraging anybody and everybody to try to process these uh, requests now or as soon as possible in order to avoid long um, time delays and lead times as we expect quite a bit of these requests to come in at the end of the year. Uh, and we may have issues and we're expecting other certification bias to have issues with um, the bandwidth to handle the number of requests that we expect to see. Okay, so that covers um, the 
how you're tra transitioning uh, certificates from the EU to the UK or vice versa. Uh, so that will touch on UK CA um, and the quality system requirements that go along with the new regulation. So I have an aspect of this transition that I haven't heard people discuss in as much detail as the product certifications, but I expect to have maybe a more far reaching, uh, more far reaching implications is the quality management system requirement. So while rules regarding um, when a, a QAN, when talking about data text directive or a quality management system surveillance certificate carried out by the notified body is required um, by the current EU regulations, then the UK QAN or a UK CA quality management system surveillance carried out by an approval body uh, is also going to be necessary for products uh, requiring that surveillance. So the big thing to note here is that that function must be carried out by a UK approval body. So this means that if you hold both an EU and a UK certification, you may be subject to auditing for both schemes in addition to any other schemes which you have um, those quality management system certification requirements for, including IECX and ISO 9001. So this may, this is why Exveritas has worked to develop a combined auditing program to allow these audits to take place simultaneously. So that means we can audit for IECX, ATEX, UKCA, and ISO 9001 all at the same time. So this approach helps to save costs, obviously, but more importantly, it avoids the time and headache of going through multiple audits each year with multiple bodies, multiple auditors, and having to address multiple lists of potential non-conformances. <clears throat> so, um, as I just mentioned, the defined product types which require a UK QAN directly correlate with the existing EU QAN or quality management system rules. So with that in mind, this table shows the um, areas for which a self-declaration of compliance is permissible and therefore an approval body, approved body uh, issued quality management certificate or surveillance audit is not required. But products not identified in this table would require the UK approved body involvement in the production side of the equipment. So observing the quality management system and surveillance of the manufacturing and distribution process. <laughs> so as is currently the case with the CE mark, just because a manufacturer has ability to self-declare, this does not alleviate them from the quality management system aspect of the scheme. The product, product management system shall be compliant with one of the required product management model, modules. And so it, it should be possible to provide evidence that such of such to a market regulating body if desired. <clears throat> so even though you are, it is permissible to self-declare compliance if you fall into one of these categories, that doesn't mean that you're alleviated of the requirements for meeting the quality management system scheme rule requirements. So if you self-declare, for instance, for equipment group two, equipment category three within the ATEX, current ATEX directive, the new EPS uh, regulation, you are able to self-declare, but you still have the um, responsibility to have compliant quality management system with ISO 80079-34, which regulates the QMS system requirements for manufacturers of EX products. Now, if you don't fall into one of those schemes, so if you have equipment category two, or equipment category one, equipment that's certified for zone zero or zone two um, uh, for EX products, electrical EX products, then you do have to have an audit conducted by uh, whatever regulatory body, a, uh, approval body that is qualified under the regulatory scheme which you're attempting to meet. So as I mentioned, if you're both certified for UKCA as well as CE uh, or the ATEX directive, and you're going to have to be audited for both. So if you have certifications issued by two different bodies, um, you will have to undergo two different audits because the rules are slightly different and the qualifications of those bodies uh, are independent of each other now that the UKCA is no longer part of the trade union. Uh, 
Um, okay, so that covers the uh, quality management system aspect of the certification schemes and a little bit of detail about the EX uh, regulations. So the new marking, um, or the use of the new UKCA mark is shown here. So as the technical requirements of the scheme and designated standards remain currently aligned, many of the marked uh, or many of the marking requirements are also stay aligned. So this means that markings required by the standards, or even in some cases the legislation itself, remain unchanged. Uh, as shown here for the ATEX directive, the EX hexagon uh, equipment category and environment remain unchanged. So the EX hexagon designation of 2-2G would apply both to the EU regulation as well as the UK regulation. Um, this means that it also standards apply, the required markings of the standards as we've shown the designated standards and the harmonized standards are also maintaining uh, al alignment in their technical requirements. <coughs> so the standard marking requirements are also going to be the same uh, regardless of which regulation that you're going to need. So this means to mark for UKCA, you only need to add or replace if you're only going to mark for UKCA and no longer mark for CE, replace the CE mark with UKCA mark and add the certificate number. Um, but due to the need of additional quality QAN, which we just discussed, um, the mark notified body number for the two schemes will also be unique. So here you'll see the EU, uh, Experitas's EU um, Notified body number 2804 will be shown under a subscript to the CE mark because that regulatory surveillance, <coughs> excuse me, that regulatory surveillance um, audit will be done under our qualification as a notified body. <coughs> Sorry, give me one second. Grab some water. Okay, sorry about that. So the notified body number um, will be different for the CE uh, or UKCA. So 2804 is our notified body number in Denmark and 2585 is our approval body number within our UK office. So those will be subscripts of either the CE or UKCA mark based on what certification body is going to be managing uh, or auditing your quality management system. So here are just some general rules regarding the use of the, of the UKCA mark. While this list is not inclusive, it does provide um, some general guidelines. So as discussed, marking on the product, <coughs> marking directly on the product will be required for the new for new products on the market in 2022 and existing products on the market in 2023. And as with the CE directive, only products which fall under the marking regulations shall utilize the mark <coughs> and manufacturer retains responsibility for the product. So as you may or may not be aware of, not all of the EU directives are marking directives. So not all of the EU directives permit you to mark the CE mark on the product. So the same thing is true for the UKCA. Um, only UKCA marking regulations uh, allow the use of the UKCA mark on the product. But regardless, um, the manufacturer retains responsibility for the product, uh, whether or not they do a self-assessment or their assessment method is the use of a third party, the ultimate um, responsibility for the product remains with the manufacturer. Okay, so that covers um, the use of the UKC work. <clears throat> All right, so how can uh, Experitas uh, offerings help you gain these accreditations in order to maintain market access to both UKCA or the UK as well as the EU and globally with the IECX certification scene? So Experitas is a qualified UKCA approval body, as mentioned. 
as well as an IACX certification body uh, at our UK facility and an EU notified body uh, from our Denmark facility. So by combination of these accreditations, we're able to ensure that the manufacturers will be covered on both or all three fronts um, and be able to maintain market access to both UK, CA, UK, EU, and internationally. Uh, we are also positioned to offer uh, combined testing and assessment, including North America NRTL um, accreditation through our extensive lab capabilities and agreements with uh, NRTLs, as well as partnerships with Inmetro and CCC certification bodies. <clears throat> so we're positioned to be provide a single source of testing and evaluation to help your product reach uh, a global market compliance. As mentioned before, we're additionally an ISO 9001 registrar. So this enables us um, to offer combined auditing services to meet both broad industry standards as well as EX product specific requirements. Uh, we train our auditors to be knowledgeable of the requirements of both of these standards, allowing us to send a single auditor to your facility, uh, again, saving you time and money and um, having the headache of dealing with multiple audits and multiple auditors. So we have um, offices located in the UK, Denmark, and North America, providing a wide range of coverage and experience. Uh, our engineers specialize in hazardous location approvals. So we really work in the X industry day in and day out. We don't spread ourselves around uh, and spread ourselves thin <coughs> doing regulations and requirements all over. The place, our guys are experts and work in one field uh, and really do offer in-depth resource for you and for your product compliance. Uh, additionally, because we have um, global resources here in the US as well as mainland Europe and the UK, um, we have familiarity with a multitude of certification schemes um, and are able to provide you assistance and assessment certification to maintain that global market access with a single provider certification body. Okay, so that concludes um, the presentation and what I had uh, to convey to you regarding the UKCA, Mark. I'm sure there'll probably be some um, specific questions here. And I don't know, let's see. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to let you know. We do have a handful of questions um, in the chat. Uh, Sean started to go over them as well. But I don't know if uh, if you just want to start at the top, Luke, and then go over those, or Sean, if you want to jump in and kind of go over some of the ones that you've already uh, incorporated your, your answers into. Sure. Sean, yeah, I think they keep track of them. It might be easier for you to start. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll just introduce myself for those who I'm trying to answer the questions that were being fielded via the chat. So uh, unfortunately, there are very few short answers to some of these questions because they're the, the usual difficult questions. Uh, just very quickly introduce myself. I, I'm the Managing Director of uh, Air Veritas in the UK. So we are the UKCA appointed body. Um, firstly, apologies for leaving Europe and making your life more difficult. Uh, please be assured our lives are our lives are just as difficult and just as confusing. Um, the other thing I'll say as a precursor to any questions I've answered or will answer is a lot of the questions are still very much grey, and I don't think the UK government knows the answer. So, uh, in in many cases, our certification bodies uh, we're being asked questions by our customers in the UK, and we're feeding those questions to the UK government, and they're going, yeah, we don't know, we haven't really sort that through yet. We'll, we'll, we'll just sort of wig it. So there's certainly not necessarily a, a definitive answer to, to everything. Um, but in terms of the questions that I have been asked, a lot of it is to do with uh, use, use of components. Um, so if, for example, you are taking an ATEX box, uh, putting contents inside it, uh, you know, the reality is from next year, that ATEX box will need to have a UKCA mark on it. This year, we can accept it and we can issue UKCA certificates using ATEX components. 
Um, but most of the manufacturers, you know, the large manufacturers of components will have got UKCA marking by next year because the, the UK is a large market. And if, if these people who make, you know, empty flame proof boxes or motors or cable glands or the, the typical components people use to make assemblies, uh, you know, if they don't have the UKCA marking for their part, then they won't be able to sell it in the UK themselves. So I think it's highly likely that the majority of products will, will have the UK CA mark and that assemblies will be able to be certified. Um, I know I've answered a few questions um, on chat and hopefully people can see the answers, but if anybody has any other questions or would like me to embellish on the answers I've given, then uh, feel free to ask them now. And you should be able to unmute yourself. Um, if you have a question, feel free to ask. Or feel free to type it and I'll answer it. <laughs> that as well. Uh, there's a question here. Is there any changes in the EX inspection services? No. Um, so the, the way that uh, ATEX works in the UK in the UK and in Europe still is there are two directives. Uh, one is for the protection of workers in potential explosive atmospheres, um, and one is for equipment. Um, so in the UK, that's called DSEA, Dangerous Substances and Explosive Atmospheres Regulations. And the equipment size, uh, as Luke said, is called the EPS Regulations, Equipment and Protective Systems. Because it also covers things like flame arresters and suppression systems. It covers mitigation as well as explosion prevention. So the requirements um, for sites, for area classification, and for inspection are identical. And, and frankly, the requirements for EX equipment they are identical. <laughs> so we already had the ATEX scheme in UK law. So we haven't changed anything. We've, we've literally just broken the tie to Europe, but we're doing exactly the same thing as we were doing before. The only thing that's really changed is the, because we're not ATEX, we're not in Europe anymore. So we don't share technical files uh, and regulatory information. So we have to have our own scheme. We're, we're literally not allowed to use the ATEX scheme. So the UKCA scheme is identical to ATEX. Whatever you're doing before with ATEX, you'll still be able to do it with UKCA. If you were self-certifying before for ATEX, you can self-certify for UKCA. If you needed a notified body before for ATEX, you'll need a UKCA appointed body now to issue your certificate. If you had an ATEX QAN before, you'll need a UK QAN now. So nothing has changed. Everything should be exactly the same. It's just another piece of paper, unfortunately. Okay, any other questions? Feel free to type them in or unmute yourself. You must have done a great job, Luke, no question. <laughs> I'm sure people will think of things. So if, if you do come up with questions, feel free to, to reach out to me. My email is l.ricks, R-I-C-K-S, at experitas.com, uh, or uh, reach out to Sean, and we'll try to get those questions answered as you come up with them uh, in the future. We're going to make this presentation uh, available online, so you can go back and rewatch it and um, view any of the slides again that you may want to um, re-familiarize yourself with as well as having the reference slide published, which um, is at the end of the presentation. So other than that, if nobody has questions, thank you very much for your attendance. Hopefully you found this uh, informative and helpful. And if you come up with anything else or as you find yourself needing um, any of these certifications, whether it be UKCA, ICX, ATEX, uh, or for North America, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist you in whatever ways we can. Hi, Luke. Before you shoot, uh, my name is Steve. I, I have got a question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, Steve. Uh, it's a complicated subject. Um, and I guess there's not been many questions because I, I think a lot of us are trying to get our head around it all. Um, but so if this is a silly question, I apologize in advance. Um, we are an air conditioning company. We, uh, we service in the UK throughout the whole of the UK. Uh, our manufacturing sites are overseas. Um, that our, uh, our factories that manufacture, that they put on the CE uh, kite mark. Um, 
would it be them or would we need to get a, a third party in the UK to put that UKCA marking on it? Um, whether you need a third party for the UKCA marking will depend. Did you need one for ATEX? Uh, we, we, we manufacture air conditioning units. Uh, are your products ATEX or are you just self-certifying them as electrically safe? Uh, we're self-certifying as electrically safe. Okay, well, if that's what you were doing before, you can carry on doing that. Nothing has changed, as I, as I say. And so basically, take, take a copy of your, uh, or, or ask your colleagues, whatever CE declaration they had before, yeah. they need to photocopy it, cross off CE, and write UKCA declaration. <laughs> it, it really is a case of, it's exactly the same, it's just a name change. Be aware, however, that we don't have directives, we have regulations, so the the names of the regulations have changed and they'll have to make sure that the standards which they're claiming compliance with are on the UK designated standards list. If you need to know more about that, it's all on our website. So if you go to veritas.com, uh, go to the help section, there's a section on UKCA marking where we've listed um, what, what was CE and what you now have to do for um, UKCA. But I mean, essentially we are only experts in, in ATEX, in EX, there are lots of directives and all of the directives have different requirements. So really we can't give a sort of carte blanche answer because you'd have to drill down to the individual directives and the individual standards that each customer is using. Okay, okay. Yeah, so as far as the, if you're asking the location- It shouldn't be difficult. <laughs> yeah, if you're asking the location at which the marks apply, like the charm if they're applying the CE mark there in wherever your manufacturing location may be, they can apply the UKCA mark uh, at that location as well. What, what really comes into play is who's typically, and again, it depends on the directive a bit, so you may want to review that, but typically it's whoever is placing the product on the market is the one that are responsible for the declaration of, the, of conformity. Right, okay. Yeah, you, okay. you may be interested to know actually that the, the law and the rules have just changed in Europe. <laughs> so just, just when you saw the UK was bad, they changed the rules again in Europe. So they've actually really tightened up on who can sign the declaration. And you do have to have now in Europe, not the UK, in Europe, you do have to have some form of representative in Europe signing the declaration or, or the importer taking responsibility. So you might want to look into that as a separate thing. There, there's new marketing, new market legislation for CE marking, which just came into force on the 16th of July. But there's loads on the internet about that. It's, the internet's buzzing with it because there's a lot of people saying that you have to have somebody in Europe sign the declaration, which isn't necessarily true, but they definitely have tightened up a lot. But the UK remains the same as it was under the old legislation because we had already left Europe before they changed the legislation. So our, our requirements are actually less onerous now than Europe's. Hey, uh, Sean, there's a question regarding I think the availability of a, a guideline. So the ATEX obviously has the guideline documents, which are a bit easier to read than the legislative <laughs> documentation. Do, do you know if one's been issued for EPS yet, or will there be? No, absolutely not. <laughs> well, the, the UK have only just formed, so there's, there's only a handful of us who are UK appointed bodies for EX. Um, and we've all got together, we've created a website. Uh, which is backed by the UK government. So we will be pushing out all of the information we have on a new website. Um, it's not gone live yet, but it, there are technical decisions being made by the UK group about what we can accept and what standards are required. So there will be information coming. One of the decisions which the UK group has proposed is, will we accept the blue, we call it the blue book, the ATEX blue book. Right. <laughs> currently, you, you, currently, you can assume that we are all still working to those guidelines. It's the same with the list of products which don't require ATEX certification, you know, things like simple hand valves. Currently in the UK, there is no list of products which are excluded from ATEX, which means everything's included, even ladders and pens. But we're applying a, sens we're, we're applying a sensible, pragmatic approach, and we're just using exactly the same rules as we used to use for ATEX, even though it's not written down. So remember, every single UKCA appointed body is also an ATEX notified body. So there are, uh, I think, eight UK appointed bodies. So there are only eight certification bodies in the world who can issue UK EX certification, eight in the world. 
there are nearly 80 ATEX notified bodies. So there are 80 notified bodies that can issue ATEX, but only eight that can issue UKCA and ATEX. So we're basically rationalizing the UK rules to the ATEX rules, and you shouldn't see any difference unless we make a decision to deviate. For example, there's some talk about accepting the assembly standard, dash 46, which isn't currently an ATEX standard. When that happens, or if it happens, then we'll publish that online, and there will be a UK EX portal, which will be uh, coming live very soon. And that's for all of the UK certification bodies. That's not an EX Veritas thing, that's a government level initiative. So Katie, to answer your question, there's not currently a guideline issued. Um, recommendation is to follow the ATEX guideline document for now until additional guidelines are published within or by the gov.uk site. Yes, yes, yes. And it's in everybody's interest that the UK remains harmonized with Europe. So there, there is absolutely no plan to deviate from what Europe's doing because we're all trying to work through the same rules. Uh, and as I say, most of the UK bodies, or all of the UK bodies, are also ATEX bodies. So it's easier for us to harmonize <laughs> than to have two different sets of rules. Okay. Any other questions anybody may have? All right. Well, as mentioned, uh, myself and Sean are available uh, for follow up questions if you come up with anything or uh, find yourself needing one of the certifications uh, that we discussed today, we're happy to, to provide those services as well. So thank you all for joining. I uh, hope everybody stays safe out there and healthy and um, look forward to speaking to you soon.